What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the all new iPod Nano 7th generation. Now this is all new and kind of resembles the older iPod Nanos, the original iPod Nanos, before they went to that watch size form factor that was sort of unpopular at first, but kind of gained traction as people started wearing them on the wrists as watches. Uh, but so they've gone back to a pretty familiar form factor here, but they've added a much larger 2.5 inch touchscreen. Uh, they still do not have Wi-Fi built into this, but they've added Bluetooth, which is the major new feature here. It still does doesn't have a built-in camera like you got with the fifth generation iPod Nano, so they kind of seesaw between different features uh, with each generation of the Nano. Now it looks like an iPod Touch, but it's not. It doesn't run iOS, it runs its own proprietary iPod Nano software, so you can't install apps or anything like that. Uh, what you see is basically what you get. Now this is available in a wide variety of colors. One of them is black and slate. Now the black version has a black screen with a slate body, just like the iPhone 5. Now with a white screen, you get a whole variety of different colors. So you get silver, purple, pink, yellow, green, blue, or product red. So you get a white screen with a different color body of your choice. They also color the background wallpaper to match your iPod. So in this case, I have the silver version, so I have a silver background. You've got the purple version or the red version, the yellow version, whatever, you get a corresponding background color. So let's take a look around the box here. We had a familiar clamshell design, very nice packaging as usual. So we have iPod Nano on the top. We have our product information on the bottom, iPod Nano. We have our Apple logo up here, which is is also color key to the body of the iPod. So if you got a red version, that would be red. Green version, that would be green. So on the back, we have our capacity. Again, only one capacity here, 16 gigs. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. All right, so we're gonna pop the lid. There is the Nano in its tray. So we'll set that aside for just a minute while we explore the content. So here we have our literature, which should contain our Apple stickers, which everybody wants to see, of course. So hello. Uh, and that should give us some information on what the buttons do and how to use them and some of the features. And we're going to explore that, of course. We have some of our basic product information. And we have our very tiny Apple stickers. Now, in our packaging, we have our new lightning connector. So, yes, indeed, the iPod Nano does make use of the new smaller lightning connector for charging and syncing. We also have our ear pods. So these are the all new ear pods, which I've reviewed in a previous video. I'll link it in the description below so you can take a look at them. I really like them. Now they're packaging them here in this sort of disposable package. This is not a travel case by any means. So it's cardboard and foam. So it's, I guess it's biodegradable. In fact, if you throw this in water, it will break down. So here are the ear pods. We're going to pop them out of here. Oops, we're ripping that up already. So again, these sound very nice. I really like them. I actually use them, uh, so I definitely recommend them. And what you won't find here is the remote and mic. So unfortunately, the Nano does not come with a remote and mic. So let's go ahead and peel this off. And let's explore the device and take a look around. So up front, you see we have a home button, which is new for the Nano. This is, resembles the iPhone and iPod Touch, but it's circular, I guess, to denote the fact that this is not an iOS device. It's something a little different. The icons on the screen also resemble those round uh, shapes. So on the bottom, we have our headphone jack, and you can see that the iPod Nano is basically as thin as it can get with the shape of the headphone jack. We also have our lightning connector, which is even thinner. Uh, so we have also something new here. This is a window here for allowing Bluetooth to function through the Nano. This is the first, first Nano with Bluetooth, so you can wirelessly stream Bluetooth audio to your car or to a headset or a radio instead of docking it. Uh, on the back, we have our iPod Apple logo. Uh, so you can see it's been polished into the anodized aluminum to that mirror finish. Again, very similar to the iPhone 5. The texture is identical to the iPhone 5. It kind of has that uh, matte uh, texture. Also on the side is our new volume rocker, which has some new functionality. So we, of course we have up and down, but we also have center click. Now center click works just like you are used to with the ear pods with the remote control. So for example, center click will play a track or pause a track, double tapping it will advance a track, triple tapping it will uh, get you to the previous track, and there's other things you can do like uh, voiceover to uh, let you know what's playing. So if you're familiar with the inline remote controls on Apple EarPods, it works the same. And also up top we have our new power and sleep wake button, again just like the iPod Touch. Now the iPod Nano picks up some of the design details from the iPhone 5 and the iPod Touch, including this sort of mirrored and polished chamfered edge that so looks very sharp. You can see that it's carried over to the buttons. Also worth pointing out is that the buttons are colored keyed to the body of the Nano. So if you get a purple version or red version or green version or black version, this will all be matched. 
All right, so let's go ahead and set up our iPod Nano for the first time. I'm just going to tap and hold the power button. You can see it brings us to our setup screen. So we can talk about this display really quickly. So we have a 2.5 inch LCD display with multi-touch. So this gives us a resolution of 240 by 432, which is good for a pixel density of 202 pixels per inch. So it's not a high quality screen. You're not going to get into the 326 uh, pixel density of the uh, iPhone 5 or the new iPod Touch 5th generation, but it gets the job done for what this does. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to choose English. Done. And we're ready to start using our iPod Nano. It was simple as that. Now because the Nano is not a Wi-Fi device, you really need to use iTunes in order to add content to it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to plug in our lightning connector here and go to our Mac. Now briefly looking at some of the features of the Nano here, again you have two home screens and you can rearrange this just by tapping and holding the items and moving them around here. You can't delete them and you can't add additional apps. What you see is what you get. Now something that appeared after I loaded some content on here is this audiobooks app. Uh, this will not show up uh, through the default configuration. So once you've added audiobooks this will appear. So I've added a little of everything. I've added some movies, music, uh, TV shows, podcasts, and some photos. So if you go to the music app, it's pretty familiar territory here. You have even genius mixes, you have your playlists, artists, albums, songs, etc. Uh, so if you go to artists, we have my Coldplay album here. You can select an album I want, see a listing, select the song, and it will play for you. Of course, there, there is no internal speaker this time, like you got with, I think it was the fifth generation or sixth generation Nanos. Uh, so of course you do have to use a pair of headphones and you have your basic audio controls here. This would work with the microphone or with the remote control if you had it, but unfortunately we don't on the uh, default earbuds. So you can play, pause, and skip to the next track. And you can press the home button to get back to the home screen or you can continue swiping right to get back to the home screen. Now we can also go to movies here and we can watch movies in full 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And so we can scroll our movie like that. And of course, this is all loaded from iTunes, not from Wi-Fi. We also have podcasts. So if you had some podcasts, which I don't have on here, they would appear in this list. And of course, you do need to preload your podcast. You can't stream them wirelessly. Now we also have Nike Plus Fitness, which works with the pedometer built into the iPod Nano, or you can use the Nike Plus transmitter, which you can store in your shoe and it will monitor your activity. We also have photos here. So we have some photo albums here. Probably nothing very good here, but you can swipe through them. You can pinch in and zoom on them just like you would with a multi-touch screen. And you can rotate them around because there is a built-in accelerometer here. And we also have a built-in FM radio here. Now, in order for it to work, you do need to connect a set of headphones and that will act as your antenna. So you can continue to listen to your music. You can skip next to find the next available station. And you can even stop to pause the music and it will record it in the background and you can pick up where you last left off. Now if you're on the home screen and you want to get back to the app that's playing audio or music, all you have to do is double tap the home button and it will take you right to it. So this works of course if you're playing back music or if you're playing back audiobooks or you're playing back something else in the background, it'll get you right to it. Now we also have a clock which is kind of a holdover from the old watch based Nano, the last generation Nano here. So you tap on that, you can see you can swipe through a number of features here. So you have a basic clock and if you tap and hold it, you can start cycling through a number of clock faces here. So you can see we have uh, some analog clock faces, uh, different backgrounds, so you get the idea. If you're done, just select that and we can swipe to the next feature here which is a, a stopwatch. So you can start, lap, lap, stop. Pretty familiar again from iOS. We also have a timer here so you can predefine a timer and you even have some sound effects if you can hear in the background and start it and it will alert you when you're all set. So we're going to cancel that. Now we also have that audiobooks app, so if we tap on it, we can select a chapter, it'll start playing for us. So we can pause, play it, skip it, and change the volume. You can also get all your information up top, and you can swipe left or right to uh, navigate through your songs and music. So if you want to get all the way back to the home screen without tapping the home button, you can also do that. Now just to demonstrate the new volume control up here, we have play or pause. We can double tap to advance the track, or we can double tap to uh, scan a track, and you can triple tap to do everything in reverse. Now if we tap and hold the center button, we also get a voiceover telling us what we're listening to. Every teardrop is a waterfall. Cold play. 
Now under settings, we'll find a new feature, which is Bluetooth audio. So we can now stream audio directly to Bluetooth devices like headsets, uh, audio docks, or even your car. So if you turn that on, you can go ahead and pair this to any device you want and listen to your audio in stereo A2DP. Now before I go, I just want to show you the evolution of the iPod Nano over the years. So we go the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh generation. You can see that the form factor has changed quite a bit, but it looks like the seventh generation has kind of returned to its original form factor, which is quite popular. So they've been experimental in the past, like the sixth generation iPod Nano with the clip, which tended to be used like a watch. So that was kind of a interesting. I really like this Nano. Uh, I think this was more interesting, more exciting, but this works really nice. It's very thin and lightweight, has some very nice features in it. Uh, and definitely Bluetooth adds quite a bit of value to it, especially for people who want to use their Bluetooth audio docs or use this in your car or use it with Bluetooth headsets. Uh, for example, when you're jogging or running around. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.